What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business, Lady Simone Candle Co. Today I am giving you a little snapshot of my one year in business financial summary. I know it's been well over a year. I actually started my business, Lady Simone Candle Co. May 17th, 2020 to be exact. And so it was a year um, May 17th, 2021. So we are quite well past that, right? But I said it's never too late to give a little financial synopsis on how Lady Simone did in her first year. And then also just give you some tips and some encouragement on whether or not a candle business can actually be profitable. So let's just get started. <music> All right, everyone, so we are in the back end of my QuickBooks for Lady Simone Candle Co. LLC, and I have um, ran my profit and loss statement for my first year in business, and um, please keep in mind that when you're watching this, I am just going to focus on the candle part of my business. I do have two businesses each having multiple streams of income. Um, so I have Lady Simone Candle Co. where I sell all of my candles and wax melts and products and things like that. And then I have Lady C's Digital HQ where there's multiple streams of income that makes up that um, business plus my YouTube channel. So we are just going to focus on the Shopify, the candle business today, and then I'm also going to point out some key things um, on this profit and loss statement just to give you an understanding on where my money went and what came in. So here is the income part of the profit and loss statement, and I am just going to scroll down here to just focus on the Shopify portion of the business. And so as you can see here, my total Shopify product sales for my entire first year in business was $6,694.28. Now, although the, you see a total income of $28,234.94, again, the bulk of that came from Lady C's Digital HQ. So that is a combination of my YouTube channel. Um, this is some donations to my business um, from my freebies, although my freebies are free. Many of my Lady C fam out there on YouTube um, donated and supported my business, my digital side of my business, and donated towards my freebies and graphic designs. My affiliate marketing, this is a combination of Amazon and Paper and Spark, um, which I am affiliate of both of those. My coaching, which most of this is, well, all of that is um, like discovery call deposits. So when I do discovery calls, I only take serious inquiries only. So I do not play around with my coaching. If you are very serious, um, so you will put a deposit down in order to consult with me so I can figure out what are your specific needs. Of course, my How to Start a Candle Biz course and then um, digital products um, sales. But here, so if you take that out, if you ignore all of the other streams of income and just focus on Shopify alone, um, technically this would have just been $6,694.28. So just the total income is a combination of both of my businesses. So now we are going to jump down to the cost of goods sold. And this is um, a combination of um, just everything that I've sold. When you do your cost of goods sold, that involves a lot of things. This 
regarding your pricing and just everything that it costs to run and operate your business and um so when and then shipping so this is the total amount that I also spent you know on shipping um how much it cost and so um when you take out the cost of goods sold and you minus that from the total product sales, technically my gross profit, if you ignore my other streams of income, as I stated before, my gross profit technically would have been $2,492.90. So you take your total sales minus your total cost of goods sold, and that is your gross profit. So here is where it kind of breaks down my operating expenses. That goes from like marketing to bank fees and processing fees, any other investments that I made in my business during my first year. Now, I have shared quite a bit that, especially on my lives, that there has been times where more money was going out than coming in. And that's because I have, um, I had a, two-year plan for Lady Simone. My first year was really to set myself up, right? When I first started, I, as I mentioned before, I didn't know what I was doing. I launched with a pre-sale and just kind of went with it and just hope for the best, right? <laughs> I did not have any marketing or promotion or advertising skills or didn't know much about that. I really wasn't on social media prior to starting my business, so that world was new for me as well. So it was real, real trial and error for me. Um, so a lot of money was going out more than what was coming in. The goal for my business during my first year, I wanted to at least make at least 500 a month with my candle and, and wax melt sales. I'm like, if I can start, if I can bring in at least $500 a month, that will be enough to not only cover my operating expenses, making more candles, um, but I can also start learning how to manage my cash flow. And so when I did the math over um, for me to have made $6,694 over that 12 months, I technically brought in, on average, $557 a month, which wasn't bad for my first year. Um, you're probably thinking, like, well, dang, that's quite low, <laughs> Lady C, um, especially if I want my candle business to be profitable and I'm spending all this money on supplies and things like that. I just don't want to make that much. But you also got to remember, Lady Simone Candle Co. is part-time for me. It's not my full-time gig. It was um, a small business that I do on the side. So I wasn't um, expecting a whole lot for my first year. And honestly, in your first year in business, you shouldn't expect a whole lot, right? Because you're just starting and you're new as a business owner. I set a money goal for myself for at least $500 a month just to see if I can do it. And if I knew I can, I know going into my second year, we can focus on what that looks like and set a new um, target goal for my month monthly sales. And so I actually did reach my goal on average of $557 a month, bringing in to Lady Simone Candle Co. Um, I did participate in a few vendor events and um, was able to release a few more scents throughout that year. Um, I do remember taking a break from Lady Simone in 2020 because I did get pregnant during the summer, really, really sick. And um, although we miscarried, it did take me out of my business for a good three, four months. So um, I was down for quite a bit. So I did have to remember that. Here is um, a breakdown of just my bank charges and fees. Now, when you operate a business, typically with a platform that you're hosting your business on or your online store or offering more ways for customers to pay, such as PayPal um, or things like Stripe, you're going to have processing and transaction, transaction fees. So that is what this breakdown is showing. And then here is a list of a lot of my um, operation expenses and um, investments. So as you can see, 
I did invest quite a bit in courses and education, right? I told I told you all and shared with you all that um, I actually had a digital product coach, and then I'm currently in a coaching program. And then I also took a few courses as well. So as you can see, this was a bulk of expenses right here. Um, here are um, subscriptions, insurance, for my candle business, legal and professional services was quite high as well. I do have a trademark attorney. I am currently in the process of trademarking my business, um, so I had to pay legal fees from that perspective. Um, and so that is quite expensive. And then another big chunk was just office supplies and software. So these were investments for my business. Um, just pr other supplies and software to just enhance my operating expenses with Lady Simone. So I did spend quite a few dollars there as well. And then here are just some general overall other business expenses as well. Supplies and materials. Um, of course, my licensing. So this was my sales tax license. And then I also had to pay federal taxes because um, – you do not have to pay estimated taxes on months you're not profitable, um, but on months that you are profitable, you do have to pay estimated taxes on. And so that is what that was. And then, so here is just a breakdown of my net operating income. And so again, I have Lady Simone Candle Co. And then I have the digital side of my business, which is Lady C's Digital HQ. And um, so that is why it shows that Lady Simone Candle Co. with both businesses, um, I had quite a great first year, right? <laughs> but if you take out Lady C's Digital HQ and all of those sales from my digital products and my course and my coaching and all of that, I would not have had a profitable year. I actually probably would have been in the negative. Um, according to my bookkeeper, when her and I were analyzing our numbers, my numbers, I would not have had a profitable, profitable first year. However, right, it was my first year <laughs> in business. And so, um, again, I was not expecting Lady Simone to have a profitable first year. Typically, you're having more money going out than you are coming in because you're investing. You're trying to build your business. You're trying to learn the ropes, right? You're spending money trying to um, get help and guidance on how to grow and build a sustainable, profitable business in the years to come. And so um, going now that I'm in my second year, going into my third year, I already have a plan for how I want to grow and scale Lady Simone Candle Co. I have product releases that is going to be coming out. For Lady Simone Candle Co., I actually have a new client that I'm going to be working with, and I also plan to go wholesale full out as well. So I am going to um, have multiple streams of income, even with just Lady Simone. I also plan to sell um, on other places such as Amazon. I've been looking into Amazon where I want to kind of scale my business that way as well. So I plan on Lady Simone being more profitable going into my third year, and I'm super excited for that. Um, so we will see how year three goes. Um, but I wanted to share this breakdown just to give you some encouragement, um, not to scare you <laughs> because you definitely don't have to spend the amount of money I did or go the same path that I did, but just to show you that you can make money selling candles and to remind you that this was all part-time. And so for me to have made that much just on part time with just my candles and my wax melts, I am quite quite proud of, proud of myself, and this gave me a great glimpse on how to manage my cash flow even better going into the next years because I I knew my first and second year was going to be more expensive just because I want to set Lady Simone up to where it can just run and operate. I want to be able to get to a point where I can hire an assistant. I already have a bookkeeper. Um, I want to be able to hire another social media manager. Um, I hired one to get myself set up for my rebrand, but I want to be able to have one on payroll 
on a monthly basis, right? So there's things that I want to do to scale my business, to take things off my plate so I can just focus on being creative, right, and making my candles and wax melts and my other products and continue to teach and coach. Um, So um, I did not have high expectations for Lady Simone first year. And even going into my second year, um, I just wanted to – make a little bit more each month, be able to pay myself a little bit. But um, I knew that I still had quite a lot of groundwork to do for my business. So this should give you a little encouragement, at least I hope so, to just show you that no, starting a business is not easy. There are a lot of things and um, a lot of avenues to take in order to get your business set up. But after... Um, some time you will begin to catch your footing and and understand how to properly manage your business. And so, yeah, so now we are going to get into some tips that I've learned within this first year into my second year that I want to share with you on how um, you can begin to start and grow a successful candle business. So let's get into that. So can you have a profitable candle business? Short answer, yes. Long answer, I love having a candle business even on the side. This is my part-time, you know, it's not even, I wouldn't even call it a hobby anymore. I'm, I'm fully in business, but I do operate part-time. And for me to have reached or really kind of surpassed my goal, on a monthly basis in my first year, I'm actually very proud of myself. And again, that was with minimal advertising, minimal promotion. It was a lot of word of mouth. It was me just trying to put myself out there. So yeah, your business can absolutely be profitable. It's a low cost entry to do. You can absolutely make candles from home. Candles, there are no shortage of customers who love candles. So the industry will always be growing. The key is to find where you fit in. And you just have to kind of dive in and put your blood, sweat, and tears into your business, just like any other business owner. So yes, a candle business can absolutely be profitable. The one question I get all the time is, Lady C, how much does it actually cost for me to start a candle business? I feel like I'm just bombarded and I'm overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. And I feel like I just don't want to spend a whole bunch of money I feel you on that. You do want to have some direction, but I would say from my experience and from networking with other candle makers over the last few years, anywhere between $500 to $1,000, you can absolutely start a candle business. And I say that because it depends on the supplier you order from, where you live, right? Because shipping plays a big part in supplies coming to you, and then what type of supplies you're actually using. So you can make very simple candles, simple jars, anywhere from very luxe high-end jars, right? Wax varies in price as well, depending on what kind of wax you want to use. So it all just kind of depends, but that's probably the most reasonable range if I had to absolutely give you an answer. Also, if you're interested in understanding like the basics of candle making, you know, what equipment you need to start off with, tools and all of that such. Check out a few of my earlier videos from when I first started my channel. That should be a great help to you. Plus, I have a candle supply list. If you subscribe to Lady C's Digital HQ, which I hope most of you are, which most of you really are, you should be able to get access to Lady C's Digital HQ and you can download all my freebies, including my candle supply list. And that includes links that will help you shop easy right and help you get all the starter tools and equipment that you need to start your candle business at home now i want to get into a few tips to help you not only start but also run and operate a sustainable successful business because lady simone is absolutely on its way we are i am a you know in my year two of business And so far, so good. I have so many plans for Lady Simone next year, things that I'm going to release. And I had to take a step back this year um, due to our pregnancy. Um, And we're super excited for expanding our family. But I had to make some adjustments to my business plan, right? And so part of being an entrepreneur, 
and or a business owner is you have to learn to be flexible. You have to learn that um, you're going to have to shift and change as the industry shifts and change or just as life happens, right? So here are a few tips that my business coach has not only helped me implement over the past almost two years being in business, but also tips that I plan to implement as I scale my business next year. So tip number one is to don't feel like when you start your candle business or if you're thinking about starting a candle business that you literally have to go all in. It's like all or nothing. A lot of people think that entrepreneurs or business owners or people that are aspiring to start a business owners, we're risk takers. And we are risk takers, right? We're, we're investing our own money to start a business, right? But the thing that I, I like to have a different viewpoint on that, at least from my experience, I like to call it more controlled risk. And that's what I want to kind of present to you and give you a little tip. Have controlled risk when you start your candle business. So start on a small scale. Don't feel like from watching myself or other YouTubers out there that are well into their business, years into their business, or those that you may see on social media that are far into their business, you feel like you have to buy or be on their same scale or buy everything that they have already. Start small, perfect the craft. I tell my students all the time that are that have been in my coaching program, perfect the craft and start on a small scale. And then that way there's minimal, um, um, you know, spending too much money. You don't have to worry about you know, pockets just being drained from constantly buying supplies that aren't working. So start on a small scale, buy a small quantity of candle supplies that you like or that you wanna test, and then go from there. Another tip, think of what you're doing as a business. Do, go ahead and decide, do I want this as a hobby or do I actually want to start a business? I get a lot of people that ask me questions about being their mentor, being their coach. I created this, how to start a candle biz for beginners coaching program and then when i present the information or help them shift their mindset into from being just a hobbyist to an actual okay i'm starting a business i need to put on my business owner hat and helping them transition into that mentality it gets it gets a little difficult and so think of it as a business track your expenses track your income track what's going in and what's coming out keep track of your inventory i can't stress enough how important inventory is not only for your operation sake to ensure that you're not spending more money than you need to but also from a tax perspective right a lot of people don't take it serious that oh well i'm just selling it to friends and family but you're also pocketing that money and it needs to be tracked in some way. It needs to be taxed. It needs to, you need to abide by your state and federal laws as a business owner. I don't care how small you are. I don't care if you've been in business for just one week. It's very, very imperative to start making that mental transition from, oh, I just make candles for fun to actually business, being a business owner. If that's the route you truly want to go. Put yourself out there and embrace digital marketing, right? We're in a world of, of just everything is digital, everything is fast speed, everything is microwave. So that is my next tip for you. I am very much an introvert, okay? I'm not sure if you all can sense that from my channel, but Paris is very much to herself. I've always been that way. My husband is the complete opposite. So I feel like, you know, the past 13 years, we it's a good balance between him and I. He brings the outgoing side out of me, and I, I kind of reel him in. <laughs> but I'm very much an introvert. But as a business owner, you cannot be afraid to put yourself out there. And I get it. Like, I was the same way. You put yourself out there. You don't want to get rejected, right? You want people to love what you're making. You want people to love your candles. You want people to embrace your new venture. And I completely understand it. But regardless of who embraces it or not, you have to keep your foot on the pedal. You just have to. I hired a social media manager for my rebranding for a few months. And Lady Simone went through a whole rebrand. Then I got sick and I took a step back from social media for a while. And I plan to pick that back up. But 
don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Lady Simone has gained quite a bit of traction, quite a bit of followers, and that's just from me being as consistent as possible, even with the digital side of my business and, and marketing to you all to get to help coach and help you understand you know, the candle industry. You have to be as consistent as possible. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there, right? If you believe in your business, you believe in your vision and your products, help others believe it as well. And those who do will hop on and those who don't, okay. Another tip that I wanna give give to you is learn from others. Do not be afraid to consult mentors and coaches or other people that are more um, experienced in this industry. Um, so you watch YouTube, right? I started with watching YouTube myself. Um, and you know, I have a few YouTubers that I love and that I still watch from time to time. But um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and say, hey, I need some help. I need a little guidance. That's what coaches and mentors are there for. Every business owner, I truly believe this, every business owner should have a coach. Like, period. Every business owner should have a coach. Before you can lead, you have to follow. And figure out, okay, what does this person offer that I need? And how can I get them on my team and convince them to believe in my vision, see where I want to go, and that person can help me get there. So don't be afraid to invest or consult mentors and coaches, see what programs they have. Again, I stress all the time, I am currently in a coaching program myself and I am not ashamed of it. <laughs> and actually my business coach, she just released a book um, and I was actually featured on her panelist at her um, book launch. And so there's a lot of opportunities that your coach can probably even get for you to put yourself out there and to promote your own business. So do not be afraid to reach out and consult others. Another tip, do not fixate on mistakes. One thing that I've learned from being a business owner and putting myself out there over these past few years, the difference between successful business owners and everyone else and I'm, I'm my prayer is that um god continues to open that door for me so i'm i'm actually in that pool myself the difference between successful business owners that i see and then everyone else is that they do not fixate on their mistakes they they make the mistake is made right but they don't fix on it they they literally learn from it and they move on they see what can I do differently next quarter? Or what can I do differently next year? How can I scale better next year? How can I manage my cash flow better next year? They're always on to, okay, here's the mistake. Let's find a solution and ensure and put the right systems in place to ensure that doesn't happen again. And that's what I'm learning even from my business coach now. She assessed my business, saw where there were some downfalls. I explained to her my vision for my company, both businesses actually, and we're, we're putting systems in place right now to help streamline and avoid a lot of the mistakes that I made in the past. So do not think that just because you've done so much research or you've watched so many YouTubers you know, about this topic that you are now knowledgeable enough to never make a mistake and so then when you do you harbor on it and you demoralize your business that's not the mindset of wanting to be a successful business owner you have to learn from your mistakes not be afraid to make them and then see how you can learn from them and put the right systems in place to prevent it in the future and my last tip that i want to give which is probably my favorite tip because I am currently in this situation myself is to get get to a point where you envision your business as or you envision yourself in your business as someone who is working on their business and not in their business and and I know when you first start a business that's hard right because you're a one-man show I'm still pretty much a one-man show um, but you have to have a vision for your business. And I envision <laughs> building a team <laughs> eventually and being able to take things off my plate. And if you want to get there, there has to be certain systems that you begin to put in place early. That is why when you saw my profit and loss sheet, you saw more money going out 
than you did coming in because every dime that I was able to make from Lady Simone, I invested it in some way, right? I still kept up with my operations. I still produced, right? I still manufactured my candles, um, but I also invested in systems. I invested in softwares. I invested in coaches. I invested in others that were more proficient in certain areas of my business to either teach me how to do it or I can put it on somebody else's plate. So for example, I was able to get a bookkeeper, right? I am the assistant treasurer at my church. So QuickBooks is not foreign to me at all. I already do it for my church. I also work on data and reporting for the state of Ohio, right? So I'm in numbers all day, every day. So when it comes to Lady Simone, it stifles my creativity. And so if I could put that on someone else's plate so I can focus on other parts of my business, once my money got to that point where I could do that, I wanted to do it. Not that I was incapable, but I wasn't, I had to put my pride aside and say, you know what, it's okay to ask for help. And if this person can help me keep my books accurate, I'm gonna do it, <laughs> right? So I want, I envisioned Lady Simone getting to a point where I can begin to work on it, work on my business, plan my business, work on the next quarter while everyone else is working in my business and helping it grow and be successful because they're on the same vision track that I'm on. And so when you first start out, that's not something that you can necessarily do, but I want to encourage you to envision that for yourself because after a while, every business owner, CEO, eventually they just want to be the CEO, <laughs> right? And watch their business flourish and hire and expand their team to help them be successful. Every business owner, ask anyone that's successful in their business, knows that you need a team to help take your business to the next level. That's just what it is, right? That's just kind of the standard goal for a business owner after a while. And so I want to encourage you to think and envision yourself in that way as well. There you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope this has, you know, kind of opened your eyes and, and gave you a little insight into, you know, a true candle business owner. Although I do operate part-time, um, this is still a, my baby and my business. And I see so much for Lady Simone and Lady C's Digital HQ. I'm working on both. And I just really wanted to um, allow this video to be more of a mental shift for you all. So you all can see, you know, it's not just a hobby. If you want to be a business owner, you have to stop thinking like just a hobbyist and really take the appropriate measures to not only start your business, but to sustain your business. <laughs> um, so I really, really hope this video opened your eyes a bit, gave you a little encouragement and insight um, into what it's like to run and operate a business. Um, don't forget that there I do have a coupon code to Maryland Wax Club for you to save 5% off your purchase order with Maryland Wax Club. So do not forget to type in that code, Lady C5, um, once you check out. And until next time, bye.